Welcome to Cosmic Comics, and thanks for joining me for another portion of the Saga of the Serpent Crown and the second portion of the Serpent Crown Affair covered in Marvel 2-in-1. And, man, things just really start to get good now. I mean, I, I really happen to think that anything dealing with the Serpent Crown from this point forward, the stories just get a lot more interesting. They get a lot better. Let's hit it. The story picks up right where it left off in the previous issue. Our heroes are being fished out of the water, and Sidewander has escaped with the crown. The entire purpose of Ben coming out here was to drop Dr. Croft off to Triton, but it still seems odd that once Sidewinder takes off, Triton is immediately like, Okay, well, we got our own shit to take care of, so have fun saving the world and all. Serpent crown, yeah, whatever, man. Got stuff to do. Meanwhile, Ben and Stingray both make the commitment to continue to work together to follow up on the crown. Ben heads inland based on information gathered from Dr. Croft, and he radios ahead to see if Reed or anybody else at Fantastic Four headquarters can help locate the crown. Instead of getting in touch with Reed, Ben is surprised when Agatha Harkness answers his call. Once she discovers that he's attempting to track the crown, Agatha insists on contacting her one-time pupil, the Scarlet Witch, whose previous exposure to the crown Agatha hopes will help locate it. She reaches out to Wanda, who's surprised by the sudden visit. Agatha incorrectly states that only Wanda can help locate the crown. We know this isn't true, because Iron Man used its specific radioactive signature to track the crown in the pages of the Avengers, meaning that anybody with access to that information and access to the correct satellites could potentially locate the Serpent Crown from Earth-S. Since Wanda once held the crown, she may still have enough of a connection to reach out and sense its location since everybody who wears the crown is forever joined with it. Then Wanda makes a bold move. She imagines the crown upon her own head, and immediately it begins to draw her in. And then, something both magical and horrifying happens to Wanda. She can see Set himself, stretched out across the multi-dimensional void, surrounded by a myriad of slightly different astral Earths, and on each he threads his various schemes, always searching for the same thing. The moment when Set can return and rule the Earth once more. Within this void, Wanda is forced to meet his gaze, and here Set sees her, and within his ever-growing mouth appears the image of the Washington Monument. The crown is in D.C. Late that night, beneath a crescent moon, Sidewinder rises from the Potomac River, serpent crown in hand. He's been through so much, but his destination is near. He slides in and out of dimensions to shorten the distance and minimize any risk he might encounter along the way. Soon, upon the rooftop of a luxury high-rise apartment building, he meets his mark beneath a shadowy vestibule. Of note, Sidewinder is shocked that the man in the shadows was capable of sneaking up on him. The man wastes no time in asking for the crown, and as Sidewinder pulls it out, the crown crackles with an energy. But Sidewinder, he's ready to be rid of the thing and have his coffers filled. The man upon the rooftop steps out of the shadows to take the crown from Sidewinder, and we're shown that it is none other than Hugh Jones, who is already wearing a copy of the Serpent Crown. This is, this is huge. This is crazy. This is, this is two times the Serpent Crown. For those who might have forgotten, Hugh Jones was kidnapped by a previous incarnation of the Serpent Squad and forced to wear the crown while they tried to pull off their harebrained scheme of raising lost Lemuria from the ocean floor. That copy of the crown disappeared, thought to have been lost in a house fire, but the reader was privy to the information that the crown actually slid down into a drainage ditch with the runoff of the water as the firemen attended to the fire. Thought lost this entire time, it turns out that Hugh Jones was still in mental communion with the crown and quickly recovered it by dispatching one of his many employees to pick it up, and he's been wearing it ever since, but he's learned to make it invisible. The Avengers then returned from Earth-S, with the second crown, whereby Vision, who said he was getting rid of it once and for all, got lazy and decided just to drop it out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, in front of witnesses no less. And somehow, 
That's the crown it took a while to find. Not that it mattered because Hugh Jones could sense the location of the other crown. So somehow he fashioned his own serpent squad. That's an interesting use of words there because it turns out that Roxxon did in fact enable the abilities of each and every member of this iteration of the Serpent Squad, and yes, they all did survive the rock slide in the ocean. Instead of waiting around for payment, Sidewinder knows some heavy stuff is about to go down, so he takes off. And then Hugh Jones does the unthinkable. He puts one crown on top of the other on his head, and the two crowns somehow merge together into one Super Serpent Crown. By the time the Thing and Stingray have arrived in Washington, air traffic control has cut off contact with the incoming planes, and as they walk through the streets, there seems to be little to no people in sight. Finally, a group of people is seen, protesters, but they're all frozen in place. Our heroes continue to meander, looking for the Scarlet Witch and wondering how they themselves escape this calamity. Without warning, Wanda arrives and tells them they all have to hurry. Our three heroes soon find themselves on the steps of Congress, with Wanda urging them forward until finally Stingray throws open the door to an in-session session of Congress. Upon opening the door, though, nobody could have expected to find what they did. Look at this imagery, the, the red, upside-down cross standing before the serpent. Hugh Jones, front and center, welcoming our heroes to the first Congress of the Crowns, which Hugh will use to usurp the power of the United States. Here, before these three witnesses, Hugh Jones names himself High Apostle of the Serpent Lord Set in Chosen Crown Bear. Dude needs to get a chin strap and make sure that thing's checked in tight. To each side of Hugh are those he calls his regents ethereal manifestations of everybody who has ever worn either one of the crowns. This is pretty amazing. We've seen telepaths have some success with the crown in the past, but by combining two crowns, Hugh Jones has exceeded all expectations with the power he is currently achieving with the crown. An entire city under his control, while at the same time calling forth complex manifestations of beings from the past. If you've watched this whole series, and you know way, way back with the Serpent Crown in the days of Paul Destin, we were given a man who could destroy nations and shape empires with the crown. And since then, the crown has shown varying degrees of power, but nothing truly of a showy nature like it did back then. This storyline is so awesome because it gives the fans what they want. It finally feels like in the moment that the power of the crown has really been restored while at the same time having the ante up from the two being combined. Fan service with a raise, yes, this is how to write a story. Hugh Jones spells it out. Due to the multiverse existing in the divergent timelines creating new realities, multiple copies of the Serpent Crown exist across the multiverse. And now, for the first time in the history of the multiverse, Two of these items have become one. The first thing Q did was wipe everybody in DC's mind clean and begin reprogramming them to be fully indoctrinated in the way of the serpent. And in a short period of time, every government official in Washington will answer to Hugh Jones, High Apostle of the Serpent Lord Set. Our three heroes have been allowed to live so that they can become Hugh's personal thralls. Note that Hugh's skin has already started turning scaly, a side effect of using the crown's power, which appears to have been hastened by the use of two crowns. Hugh calls our heroes forward, and Ben Grimm answers him exactly like we would expect him to, ready to beat some sense into the guy. But we all know how this was going to go down. All those green guys standing around, doing nothing? Yeah, they're all going to throw down now although not as effective as their namesakes. Numbers alone make these green phantoms dangerous. While Stingray and the Thing are forced to brawl it out, Wanda attempts to approach Hugh directly by offering to freely submit herself to Set. Hugh allows her to approach, 
but Set's memory of her keeps him cautious. And sure enough, at the last moment, Wanda throws up her hands for a hex, but is caught short when Hugh Jones grabs a hold of her hands and mocks her for her foolishness. I mean, this is actually really cool to catch the Scarlet Witch with her hands in that position, but then not allow her to be able to, like, knock out the hex. I thought it was rather ingenious. While Hugh has her in her grasp, he takes her up on the offer to submit, and the two serpents bury their fangs deep within her temples. Her astral form is suddenly plucked from this world and left to drift in the void between dimensions instead of floating free as she once did, and she now finds herself drifting into the coils of Set. And here we are given a fantastic two-page spread that both covers the action and the fighting, while keeping the very non-physical battle within Wanda's mind the focal point. The green specters of Serpent Crown Past have been defeated, and Ben turns his focus towards Wanda's struggle. He does the only thing he can think of to do. He approaches Hugh Jones and attempts to pull the crown off of his head. But then suddenly something totally unexpected happens. Ben changes back to normal. Despite the change, Ben doubles down on his effort, and for the first time, the serpent crown actually seems a little bit attached to the skull. Determined to pull Hugh Jones' head off if he has to, Ben continues to struggle. At the same time, the Scarlet Witch is losing her battle in the astral plane. Wanda senses that, for a moment, the coils loosen and Set's attention was divided. With this in mind, she takes a gamble that if she can distract Set enough on this end, then whatever is opposing him on the outside, she might give it a fighting chance. So in an effort to surprise Set, Wanda dives directly into his maw. Her physical body loses all connection with her spiritual one, and the remaining husk falls to the floor. The surprise sacrifice does its job. A mere moment of disorientation on the part of Hugh Jones allows Benjamin Grimm the chance to rip the crown from his head. Ben then realizes that his human visage was nothing more than an illusion of the crown that was put forward to shake his confidence or to convince him to leave the crown in place. Ben's moment of victory is short-lived, for as he holds the crown, it decides to place itself upon Ben's head by slithering itself down his arm. And there for a moment stands the thing. Then, suddenly, he throws the crown to the ground, claiming his rocky head was too thick for that snake to push through. Ben admits that for a second, something rose up and did try to take him, but something else interfered, allowing him the chance to toss off the crown and be free. Wanda informs Ben that that brief window for freedom was Hugh Jones's mind still reaching out, unwilling to just yet relinquish his power over the crown to one he saw as unworthy. While these two sort it out, Ben is pulling up the wood flooring to create a giant ball around the serpent crown, ensuring that it's contained and that he doesn't have to touch it as they decide what to do next. Hugh Jones is still alive and in need of medical care as he's still passed out. Ben, meanwhile, makes a good decision in deciding to take off before any of the politicians catch sight of the crown. Thus ends another chapter of The Serpent Crown. But it raises so many more questions. Mainly, how are they going to address the fact that they can't successfully contain one copy of The Serpent Crown? And they've learned that there could be an infinite number of Serpent Crowns out there just waiting to show up out of the blue and mess up everybody's day. This copy of the Serpent Crown will be dropped off at Project Pegasus for safekeeping for now. Thanks for watching. Feel free to hit the buttons below. I'm out.